Good morning. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, so today for class, um, we're gonna be working on some binds. So if you don't have a yoga strap, um, that's perfectly fine, but it might be a good idea to have um, even just like a small dish towel. Um, you can have a belt, like a, you know, a actual belt or maybe a bathroom belt. Um, you know, you're tighter in the shoulders. Otherwise, um, you know, if you don't have anything, we'll adjust um, accordingly. So no, um, no worries if you don't have any props. But if you do, just leave it towards the front of the mat. Also, if you have something to stand in for blocks, go ahead, grab those. And then you're gonna start laying down on your back. Bend your knees so your feet come flat. Your knees will point straight up. Let your hands rest on your hip points. Let the shoulders soften and roll backwards so that you can feel a widening across your collarbone. And take just a few moments here to really land. Even though it's rather early, let yourself transition from wherever you were to now where you are. And chances are, right, you aren't physically very many places these days, right? It's really like traveling from the bedroom to the living room or the bathroom to the living room. See if energetically you can let yourself really come into a new space. Maybe you can do this by way of deepening your breathing. It was to create a little more space in the mind, a little more space in the body. And that act is kind of a buffer between what was earlier and what's to come. And if you find it particularly difficult maybe to settle the mind, start to really tune into the sensations of your breath. I really appreciate all of the subtle um, but incredibly vital things our body does to keep us alive, to keep air coming in and going out. And then I want you to bring your attention now to where your hands are, start to breathe into your hands as though you had a second pair of lungs right underneath your hip points. And then when you come to the bottom of the next breath, stay there. See if you can really empty out. And then take a full breath in through your nose, fill all the way up, low belly, lungs, throat. Open your mouth, exhale. Again, full breath in through the nose, fill all the way up. Exhale in and out your mouth. Feel your torso get a little heavier with that exhale. And then one more time, full breath in through the nose. This time, pause, close your mouth, and exhale out your nose. Take a couple breaths like this. And then eventually you'll take your hands off of your hip points. You're going to bring your arms out to the sides so as best you can. So you're going to make like cactus arms or goal posts. So you're aiming for a 90 degree angle between the upper arm and the forearm, 90 degree angle at the elbow. And then pause here for a moment. Where you'll find a little more maybe expansiveness across the chest. Maybe you're feeling a pulling from this stretch across the chest. And you may notice that with your arms out like this, the upper ribs, the upper back, kind of pop up. The back pops up, the ribs pop forward. I want you to see if you can press down into your feet. Think of your chest getting heavier. So your upper ribs kind of tack back down onto the ground. You may feel your pelvis kind of curl underneath you so that you become a little more stuck to the ground. 
And I want you to keep this alignment, keep those ribs pulling backward. So it's kind of like this containment of the front body. And then slide your arms behind you, like you were reaching for something behind you that you can't quite, um, can't quite reach. So you have to really extend through the fingertips. You almost feel the rib cage lift. And then drag the elbows back down, come back to that starting position. As best you can, keep the backs of the hands in contact with the ground. Maybe that just means the fingertips, but try to create some kind of um, connection. Let's do that a couple more times. Inhale, pull the fingers back behind you as you continue to pull the rib cage down. And then draw the elbows back down. So take a couple of these on your own. And notice that this will probably feel a lot easier if you let the rib cage flare. But I want you to really work to keep the rib cage pulling down. So that this requires some work. And then the next time that your elbows come down, collect the knees into your chest. You can roll side to side a little bit. And then keep the right knee into your chest, lengthen the left leg out. Keep the left foot lifted off of the ground. Keep the uh, pink, all five toes pointing up towards the ceiling. And then lift your head and chest, roll your shoulder blades off of the ground. And then you're gonna reach your arms forward. Hover here for a moment. And then you're gonna switch. Pull the left knee in as you lengthen the right leg out. And then again, switch. And switch. Try to keep those ribs pulling down. Switch. Left knee comes in. Last time, right knee comes in. Hug the knee into your chest. Let the left leg come down to the mat. And then you're going to guide the right knee to the left. Come into a twist. You could bring a block or pillow underneath the right knee if you'd like a little bit of support. Let the right arm really reach out long to the right. And then you can keep your head looking up or you could look to the right towards your hand. I want you to keep this right arm really long and active. You're gonna sweep the right arm up over your head like you were reaching behind you again. And then dragging your hand along the ground, sweep it down like you're reaching your right fingers towards the front of your mat. And again, take a couple of these on your own. Let this really be sweeping like you were making a snow angel or like you were moving through water. So you can really just let the shoulder blade Start to find rhythm with the arm. Take one more sweep. And then come back on to your back. Hug the right knee into the chest. We're gonna take those little ab bicycles one more time. So lift the left foot off of the ground. Peel your shoulder blades off of the mat. Reach your arms forward. And then left knee pulls in. And then switch right. And then left. And then right. And then one more time, left knee pulls in, pause. Interlace your hands around the left knee. Let your head come back down to the mat. And now you'll guide the left knee to the right. Finding a twist. Again, you can look over the left shoulder. You can keep your head looking up towards the ceiling. And then we'll start with these sweeping motions. So sweep the left arm behind you. Reach for something imaginary behind you. And then keeping the arm really long, drag it along the ground like you're reaching towards the front of the mat. And a couple times like this on your own. And like me, you may be noticing that it's time to sweep the ground. It's a lot of dust. But play into it. And then next time that you complete a sweep, you'll roll flat onto the back. Pull the left knee back into your chest. Lift the right knee to join it. And then you can rock up to come onto all fours or you can Roll over onto one side. Come into a tabletop position. Spread your fingers. Make sure the feet are parallel, ankles right in line with knees. And then take an inhale, come into cow with the belly button sink as the chest lifts. Exhale, round for cat. Pull the belly button up, puff up the upper back. Inhale, come forward. Cow. Exhale, round for cat. Again, inhale, forward cow. This time as you round, sit into a child's pose, sink the hips back towards the heels. You may like to scoot the arms, hands forward a little bit. 
And then inhale, pull back up to cow. Exhale, round back to a child's pose. Take a couple more of these on your own and you can start to invite some other maybe more circular movements. Roll out the head, roll out the hips. And then the next time that you come into a child's pose, pause. Reach the arms out really long. Crawl the fingers forward to the palms of the hands tense. And then lift your head, look in between your hands. You're gonna slither yourself forward onto your stomach. Zip the legs together. And then you're gonna bring your arms out to that cactus shape again. This time you're just lying on your stomach. So press into the knees, press into the thighs, press into the feet. And then take a look at your left hand. You're gonna pull it in towards you. So the left hand is framing the left rib cage. Keep your gaze down, keep your head down. You're gonna use this left hand to roll onto the outer right line of your body. As best you can, you're gonna balance on that right outer hip. Keep the head down or at least relax. And then as best you can, you'll keep that 90 degree angle in the right elbow, lifting the front of the right shoulder off of the ground to get a pec stretch. So you could stay here with the feet stacked. You could lift the left leg and pull it behind you, either bending the knee or just kind of reaching the heel and big toe behind you for a little extra weight. And then pull yourself back onto your stomach. We're just going to switch out the arms so the left arm will cactus. You'll pull the right fingers in to bring your rib cage. I like to kind of tent my palm once again. And then push into your right finger pads. Roll to the outer left hip. Again, making sure that you are keeping the front of the left shoulder lifted, right? So that you're externally rotating the shoulder. You're getting that big stretch across the chest, your pec muscle. And then if you wanted a little extra weight, you can lift the top leg. You can bend the knee and point the toe behind you, or you can just reach the leg long on diagonal. A deep breath, breathe into any constriction you might feel. And then roll back onto your stomach. Bring both hands to frame your ribcage. Press yourself up onto all fours. Take an inhale, find cow. And then exhale, tuck the toes, lift the sit bones up and back for a down dog. Start to pedal your feet in your down dog. And see what these are. Kind of like luxurious pedals. I often see people take this really quickly. Take your time so that you can really get into the back of the leg. You can get to the Achilles behind the knee. And then as you pedal, you might try shifting the heel side to side so that you're not just opening the backs of the legs, but now you're getting the sides of your body. You're getting into your lats underneath your armpit. And come back. Do a still down dog and roll yourself forward to a plank. And then bring just the left knee down. See that the left knee falls underneath your left hips. See that the hands are still underneath your shoulders. And then really reach back through your right heel. Reach forward with the crown of your head. So you're using those opposing energies to create length. And then I want you to push your hands even more firmly into the ground. Find the opposing energy of your belly button up. And then notice if a lot of weight has shifted into your left knee, can you really even yourself out so it's just like you uh, kind of Photoshop the right knee out of the picture, everything is still nice and even. And then keep all of these opposing energies at play. Lift the right foot off of the ground, reach even more deliberately out through the right heel. And then when you feel steady, you'll reach the left arm forward to play into the opposing energy of the right heel reaching backwards. Then bring the left hand down, bring just the right toes down to the ground. You're gonna swivel the left shin out to the left, roll open, reach the right arm up for a supported side plank. Really push into the back foot, anchor down the outer edge of the right foot. And then I want you to flip your top hand to the palm faces away from you. You're gonna bend at the elbow. We're gonna take just a half bind here. So the back of the hand will find the small of your back. 
I want you to lift your right shoulder up near your ear, so like you're scrunching it, and then loop it down and back so the front of the shoulder rolls away from you. And then you might find as you um, find this positioning of the arm and the shoulder that once again, the ribs want to pop forward. See if you can pull the ribs back towards this hand that's at the small of your back. So you're not rounding through your spine, you're just finding like a containment of the front body and collecting in of the ribs. So you'll feel your tailbone lengthen down. So that this bind um, is muscular. And then reach the top arm up, release that half bind. Reach the top arm forward, 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 forward. Feel it pull you back down. You'll spiral onto the ball of the right foot, swivel that left shin back in. Let's tuck both sets of toes. Take a breath in. And then use the breath out. Push yourself downward dog, three-legged down dog. So that that right leg stays up. And then you can bend the right knee, open the hip in any way that feels good, that feels um, beneficial. If you prefer to keep the leg straight, that's fine as well. You can make some circles, you can roll the ankle. Then square off the right leg, so you'll turn the right toes down, the whole leg will come a little bit closer to the ground. Pull the right foot forward, step it in between your hands. Bring your back knee down. And then reach your arms up. And this doesn't have to be a crescent lunge, this will be more of like a half kneeling position, so the knee will be more or less over the ankle. And then turn your palms forward. Take an inhale, lift your ribcage up. And then as you exhale, pull your elbows down. So it's very similar to what you were doing on your back. And then again, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, pull the elbows down. And then pull them down, down, down even further, like you're kind of squeegeeing your shower door. You'll feel the shoulder blades really pull in towards one another. And then you'll release your forearms. You're going to find a bind here. So for some of us, we'll very easily be able to interlace our hands. This is a good place if you wanted to use, um, use a towel, you could use a towel. You could also just grab for your forearms, grab for your elbows. Roll the fronts of the shoulders back, right? But then see that you aren't, again, flaring your ribcage. There's this um, ab work at play. You're pulling those ribs in. So the chest is opening, but we're not spilling forward. And take an inhale, lift your chest a little higher. Then release your hands down to bring the front foot. You could bring the fingers to blocks. And then you're going to lengthen the front leg. You may need to scoop the heel forward. And then get this to be really active by trying to drag the heel in towards your belly button. You'll feel that hamstring engage. You could turn the right toes out to the right to get into the outer line of the leg. And then pull the chest forward, right? As you drag the heel back, the chest pulls forward. One more breath in. And then re-bend this right knee. Tuck the left toes, lift the left knee. And then bring your um, hands uh, to very deliberately come to um, the respective sides of the mat. And I want you to heel the right, heel toe the right foot a little more to the right so that your right knee connects with your right inner arm. And I want you to find a little bit of a um, knee elbow bind here. So you're gonna really push your right knee into your elbow, but you're going to resist. You're gonna push your elbow back into your knee. And notice how that's gonna light up the outside of your right hip. Your glute is gonna start to fire. And then you're gonna keep that engagement in the leg but remove the right arm, lift it up. And still keep that pressure as though your right knee was still pressing into something and something was resisting back. And sweep this right arm forward. And you're going to pivot both feet to the left. You're going to bend the left knee, come into a kind of mini skandasana. So the hands will stay on the ground. You're bending the left knee, you're lengthening as completely as you can through the right leg. And this does not have to be low, your hips can stay pretty lifted, but keep your spine long, keep your chest pulling forward. And then you're gonna shift to the front of the mat, bending the right knee, stay really low. You're like a little crab that's scuttling. 
And then shift to the back of the mat again. And then shift to the front of the mat, coming back to low runner's lunge. Plant your hands and then step back, downward facing dog. Roll forward to a plank. Bring just the right knee down so it falls underneath your right hip. See that the hands are still underneath the shoulders. And then you're going to pull your chest forward, reach back through the left heel. And then press very firmly down into the hands so you find the lifting up of your abdominals. And then without letting any more weight shift into the right knee to lift the left leg behind you, reaching through the heel even more actively. And then when you're ready, you'll reach the right arm forward. The reaching um, your pinky finger of the right hand away from the pinky toe of your left foot. And then hand comes down, left toes come down. Swivel the right shin to the right, peel open, reach the left arm up. Push into the outside edge of the left leg, reach away from the left leg with the crown of your head. Now we're gonna find that half bind again. So I'm gonna flip my hand so the palm faces away from me. I'm gonna bend the elbow, back of the hand will find the small of my back. You could wrap the um, pinky finger to the hip crease, but it's still early, so you don't have to take the deepest bind here. And then once you've found your um, hand and your back connecting, you're gonna roll the left shoulder towards your ear and then loop it down and back so that the front of the shoulder rolls away from you. And then again, you may find that the ribs wanna poke forward, pull them in, right? So your abdominals are working. It's not, um, it's not passive. You're really working to roll the left shoulder backwards. That's not passive. And then let that go, reach the top arm up. And then pull it forward like you're reaching beyond your head. And then let this spiral you down. The left hand returns to the ground. You'll spin onto the ball of the left foot, swiveling the right shin in. And tuck both sets of toes, take a breath in. And then it's a three-legged downward facing dog on the breath out, press through the right toes and right foot. And then bend the knee, open the hip any way that feels good. It can be static, or you can find a little bit of movement at the hip or ankle. And then you'll lengthen that left leg out, square off the hips. And then pull the left foot forward, step it in between your hands. Bring the back knee down. Reach your arms up, come into your half kneeling position. And right away, collect the ribs in. Turn the palms forward. Take a deep breath, lift the fingertips a little higher. And then as you exhale, draw the elbows down. Inhale, reach the arms back up. Exhale, pull the elbows down. This time they'll come even further down, even further down. So you'll feel the shoulder blades really move in towards the spine. And then when you feel like you pull them down as far as you can, you'll release your forearms, interlacing the fingers, using your towel, or maybe just grabbing elbows. And then you'll roll the fronts of the shoulders back so the chest comes forward. But for tonight, see if you can keep the ribs pulling in. Right there, so there is a version of this where we really find the back bend. But for today, I want you to focus on trying to keep that um, integration of the rib cage into the rest of your torso. You take one more breath, lift the chest, and then release your hands. They'll come down outside of the, um, to each side of the left foot. And then you'll shift your hips back, lengthening through the left foot. And I always have to scoot my left foot forward a little bit. And then make this active by dragging that left heel in towards you and pulling your chest forward. So as best you can, you're keeping a long spine, lifting the sternum up and away. Make one more breath here. Maybe you turn the left toes out to the left a little bit. And then exhale, release, re-bend the left knee, come back to your low runner's lunge. You'll tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. And then move your left hand out to the left slightly. Heel toe the left foot a little more to the left so that the left knee meets the left elbow. And then push that elbow into the knee without the knee moving in towards your midline. So the knee is really pressing back into the elbow. There's a lot of resistance. 
And then keep all of that activation, that pushing, pulling going on in the knee, in the hip. Reach the left arm up. Imagine that your elbow was still pressing into your knee. And then reach the top arm forward. Let it come down inside of the left foot. And then you're going to pivot to the right, bending the right knee, coming into your skandhasana. Really actively lengthening through the left leg, lifting the chest forward, letting the hips reach behind you. And then stay under the radar as you shift. So you'll bend the left knee, keeping the hips nice and low. Hands are there to support you. And then again, shift to the back of the mat. And then shift forward, coming back to your low runner's lunge. And then step back, downward facing dog. Then start to walk the feet forward. We'll come into a forward fold at the top of the mat. Feet are hips width distance. Take an inhale, find a long spine, hop onto your fingertips or pull the hands up to the shins. And then exhale, release. Knees will stay soft. Really let the spine, the head kind of cascade out of your pelvis. The sit bones are still reaching up and back. Let's take a slow roll up to stand, keeping the chin tucked to the chest, letting the arms dangle. And eventually the chin will peel up off of the chest. Spine Tadasana, the feet can stay in our hips width, or you could bring the feet together. You'll do what feels steadier, what feels right to you. And let the eyes close. Let the palms spin forward. Find that broadening of the chest once again. And then see if you can just temper the ribs pulling forward, kind of knitting them back in. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Let it out your mouth. Again, full breath in through the nose. And then let it out your mouth. Take a deep breath in, reach the arms up. See your fingers. And then as you exhale, keep the knees soft as you fold forward. Fingertips come down to the mat. Inhale, find a long spine. And then exhale, step back to a plank. And we'll hold our plank. Reach through the heels, really activate your legs, right? It's easy to kind of forget about our legs here because Feel the burn kind of in our shoulders and abs first. But you can alleviate some of the work that has to cut them in the arms and the abs if you can really lift your thigh bones, use your glutes. Stay here for one more breath in. And then on the breath out, lower yourself down to the mat. Let the inhale pull you forward, low cobra, or you could take a deeper back bend. And then exhale up and back, downward facing dog. And these vinyasas that we take are yours, so you could skip them entirely. I don't often cue a chaturanga, but you could take chaturanga. You could use your knees. Do what you need, do what feels best. And with your next breath in, bend the knees, look forward. Step or float your feet between your hands. Inhale, find a long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale to reach your arms up, look up. And then exhale, Tadasana, hands to your sides. Again, Surya Namaskar, inhale, reach the arms up, look up. Exhale to soften, fold forward. Inhale, long spine. Exhale to plank, lower down. Inhale, we'll pull you forward. Exhale, presses you up and back. Downward facing dog. Couple rounds of breath here. And then with your next breath in, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step or float, feet between your hands. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, Tadasana. Again, inhale, arms up. 
Exhale, soften to fold forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, step back, hop back, lower down. Inhale, pulls forward. Exhale, presses up and back, down dog. Next breath in, bend the knees, look forward. Step our float feet between hands. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, Tadasana. I'm going to let you take one more on your own, and we'll meet in a forward fold. Once you've arrived in your forward fold, separate your feet so that they're a little wider than hips distance. And then again, find a forward fold, let the head go. You could find a bind if you'd like this time, interlacing your hands behind your head. You could grab for your elbows. You could interlace your hands behind you and work with the binds that we worked with when we were kneeling. Keep the fronts of the shoulders rolling up and away from the ground. Find a gentle sway. And then release whatever bind you have from the fingertips back down to the ground. And then lift your chest slightly so that you're looking forward just a little bit. And then you're going to move your left hand underneath you, um, like underneath where your nose would fall. You could bring your hands to a block here if you have a block or something to function as a block. And then very deeply bend your left knee so much so that the right leg can lengthen almost entirely. And then reach the right arm up, pushing down very actively through the left hand will help you find more of a lift in the right arm. And then you're gonna flip your hand, you're gonna find a bind. So that could mean again that the hand comes to the small of the back. You could reach your right hand to the top of the left thigh or in towards the left hip crease. And then I want you to use this bind between your hand and your back or your hand and your thigh. Roll the right rib cage open and see that that right sh for, um, front shoulder isn't collapsing forward. Roll it back and down. You'll feel their shoulder blade kind of tack on the back of their rib cage. Push down to that left hand, maybe find a little more of a twist. And then release that right arm back up. And then let's switch. The right hand will replace the left hand. We'll deeply bend the right knee so that you can lengthen through the left leg. And then peel open, reach the left arm up. And then find your half bind, flip the palm. Hand can come to the small of the back or crawl to the right thigh. Lift the front of the left shoulder up and back. Push into your bottom hand to roll open. And reach the left arm back up. Bring the left hand down to the mat. Take an inhale, find a long spine. And then make your way back to down dog. You can step back, float back. Take a vinyasa if you'd like. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Step or float the feet between the hands. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, release. And inhale, reach the arms up, look up. Exhale, hands come down to your sides. And inhale, find a chair pose. The arms will sweep up as the hips sink back. And then keeping the arms forward, I want you to just flip the palms so that they face down towards the ground. Your fingertips are reaching up and away. Your backs of the hand are um, and reaching towards the ceiling or back behind you a little bit. I want you to take a breath here, collect those ribs in, the front ribs in, and then exhale, pull the elbows down. Feel the shoulder blades squeeze together. 
Again, inhale, reach the arms up, lengthen through the elbows. Exhale to bend the elbows. One more time, inhale, reach the arms up. And then this time as you exhale, fold forward, interlace the fingers at the small of your back. Elbows can stay bent or straight. Inhale, lift the chest forward, maybe you reach the knuckles back. And then exhale, fold forward. Again, inhale, lift your spine, lift your gaze. Shift weight into the right foot as you slide the left leg back, coming into a lunge. If you can make a long diagonal, so you're kind of halfway between a low lunge and a high lunge. Roll the fronts of the shoulders back. Take a breath in here. And then release the left hand down to the ground. Reach the right arm up. Find your low lunge twist. And then reach the right arm forward. We're coming back to Skandasana. You'll pivot feet to the left. Bend the left knee. And this time we'll stay here. So you could keep the hands on the ground. You could lower the hips. Bring the hands to your heart. Whichever you choose, make sure the left heel is very rounded. The right leg is very long. The chest is tall. Take one more breath in. And then with the breath out, bring the hands down and pivot back towards the front of the mat. Bend the right knee. We're going to come into a uh, side angle. So you could bring the right hand inside of the foot to a block. If you don't have a block or if that feels a little bit crunchy, you'll bring the right elbow to the right thigh. And then you'll reach the top arm up. So this is where you'll stay if you're taking the elbow to the thigh. If you're coming down lower to the floor or to a block, you want to plug the right elbow, right upper arm, into the right inner knee. And then use that pressure, roll yourself open so the left rib cage rolls on top of the right. And then again, we're gonna find a bind. So you'll flip the hand. We'll start with a half bind. Hand will come to the small of the back or wrap to your hip crease. And then just notice that as you find the bind, you kind of let that integration of the ribs go. Pull the ribs in. Kind of connect the floater ribs to your hips. Take one more breath in here. Then reach the left arm back up, press into your feet, come into a warrior two. Take an inhale, reach the arms up. And then exhale, soften back to that warrior two. And then keeping with our theme, can you pull the ribs in? Activate the abs, find the tailbone getting a little heavier and weighting itself down. Then flip the front palm, inhale to reach up and back. Then hands will come down to frame the front foot. Step back, downward facing dog. And take an inhale, bend the knees, look forward. Exhale, step or float your feet between your hands. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale to reach the arms up, look up. And then exhale, hands to your sides. Inhale for a chair pose, reach the arms up, and then flip the palms so they face down. Pull the floater ribs in. Take an inhale, lift the rib cage just slightly, and then exhale, draw the elbows back, find that cactus shape of the arms. Inhale, staying in chair, reach the arms up. Exhale, bend the elbows. One more time, inhale, reach up. This time as you exhale, you'll fold forward, interlacing the hands behind you or grabbing for elbows or using a towel. Inhale, find a flatter back. So you could lengthen through the arms or you could keep the elbows bent. Exhale, fold forward. Again, inhale, long spine. So keep your spine long, keep the gaze slightly forward. You're gonna shift weight into the left foot. Slide the right leg back, come into a lunge. Keep the crown of the head pulling forward. Keep those knuckles pulling backwards if the um, arms are bound. Take one more breath in here. Then release the right hand down to the ground. Left arm reaches up for your low lunge twist. Reach the top arm forward. Pivot the feet to the right. 
Skandasana, bending the right knee. And this time we'll stay. So you could use the hands for support. Just working on finding the length of the spine, the lift in the chest. If you feel open enough in the calf and the hips, you might lower the hips lower to the ground. Again, we're anchoring down through the right foot. We're getting as long as we can in the left leg. Take a breath in. And then you can use your hands, shift towards the front of the mat, bending the left knee. And then you'll find the version of side angle that works best for you. So you could bring elbow to thigh, reaching the top arm up. You could keep the left hand down inside of the left foot. I suggest using a block or something to function as a block. And if you're low down here, if you have the hand on the ground or a block, you're gonna connect the left arm to the left knee, right, resist, find res mutual resistance, and then use that resistance to roll open. And then you'll find your half bind flipping the palm, the hand will come to the small of the back, maybe wrap to the left hip crease. But keep your ribs heavy and pulling in so that it's really a rotation here. It's not a flaring, it's not a spilling to get into the bind. Roll the top shoulder up and back. And then let's release the top arm. Press into the feet to come up to warrior two. Take an inhale, reach the arms up, give that front leg a little rest. And then exhale back to warrior two. Collecting those front ribs in, right? Kind of lengthening down of your tailbone. Strong center. Then flip the front palm, reach up and back. And then exhale, hands will come down to frame the front foot. Step back to a downward facing dog. And then you could take a vinyasa if you need it. You could stay here and down dog and breathe. You could take a child's pose if you need a little bit of a reset. And then bend the knees, look forward. Step or float your feet between your hands. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale to reach the arms up, look up. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, chair pose, palms flip. Exhale, pull the elbows back. Inhale, lengthen the arms. And then exhale, fold forward, interlacing the hands behind you. Inhale, find the long spine. And now pause here, a little bit different. You're gonna shift weight into the right foot. This time it's a warrior three. So you'll reach back with the left leg. Pull forward with the chest. Keep the fronts of the shoulders rolling back. And start to stop, soften the standing leg. Low lunge twist, right arm reaches up. Right arm sweeps forward, pulls you back into Skandasana. So this time around, you could stay, choose whatever option you took in the previous round of this. You could reach the arms out. You could take a bind here. You'd wrap a left hand around the left knee. And if you can't grab fingers, you could grab your t-shirt, you could use your towel. Keep that right shoulder rolling up and back. And hands come down, pivot into your side angle. You could keep the half bind, practice um, rotating through the rib cage by using the pressure of that hand that's on the ground, or you could take your full bind. So if you're taking your full bind, don't forget about that pressure between right arm and right leg. Right, because you don't have the pressure of the hand rolling down, you need to really lean back into the little shelf that you're making with your right leg, right shoulder. And then release the bind, warrior two. Take an inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, soften back to warrior two. Flip your front palm, inhale, reach up and back. And then exhale, bring your hands down. Pause in your low runner's lunge. So this is a good place to use blocks if you have them. Otherwise, we're going to just have fun with this transition. So lift the hips a little bit higher. Feel the left leg get a little bit lighter. 
You're going to pull the left knee in towards your chest. Shoot the leg through as you come to sit down. It's like a little pistol squat. Bring your left leg down to the mat. And then settle in to your really rooted through your sit bones. So this right leg is going to stay bent. You don't want to squeeze the heel in too close to the, um, to the sit bone. You want to let there be a little bit of space. And then let there be a little bit of space in between right leg and um, left leg and right foot. So you're on a railroad track here. And then you're going to bring the left arm behind you. Point the fingers away from you so you can really lift through the chest. And then reach this right arm up. And then you're going to start to pull forward. So not rounding through the spine yet. Just like you were um, reaching for something a little below eye level. So that the inside of the right arm comes to the inside of the right knee. Now, heavy the inner edge of the right foot here. You're going to kind of want to roll to the outer edge of the foot. Keep really rooted into all four corners. And then you're going to find as best you can a bind. You're going to wrap the right arm behind you. Maybe the left hand comes to join it. Maybe this is where you grab for your towel, or you can grab for your shirt. Right, but again, make sure that right knee doesn't spill out to the right. And then once you have your bind, I want you to lift your chest once again. And then start to pull your lifted chest forward. And then you could let the head go. Find a softening of the cervical spine. But try to keep the low back reaching long, the chest pulling forward. And then let that go. Release your bind. And then we're going to cross the right foot over the left leg for a seated spinal twist. So this time the right fingers come behind you. Reach the left arm up. And then let's get the right knee in the crook of the left elbow. We we'll take a breath in, get a little taller. And then exhale, start to twist. So think of the um, right ribs, the right rib cage moving away from the right leg, the left ribs moving towards the right leg, so that you have a little bit of space. We're not crunching into the twist. We're really rotating. And then unwind. Find a little counter twist. And then cross the knees, roll over your shins. Make your way back to a downward facing dog. Bend your knees, look forward. Step or float your feet between your hands. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, release. Inhale to reach the arms up. And then exhale, Tadasana. Left side, inhale, chair pose. Palms face down. Exhale, draw the elbows back. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold forward, interlace the fingers. Inhale, find a long spine. Shift weight into the left foot. Pluck the right foot off of the ground. Keep the chest pulling forward as you reach back through the right foot for warrior three. And start to soften through the standing leg. Twist in low lunge, right hand comes down, left arm reaches up. Sweep the top arm forward, pivot into Skandasana, bend the right knee, lengthen through the left leg. And then you could fly away here, reaching the arms out. You could find your bind. You could choose to keep the hands down, just work on finding that lifted chest. And then release your bind, scoop forward for your extended side angle. So again, you could choose to keep the elbow on the knee or on the thigh, taking a supported version. You could find your half bind again and really use the pressing down into the left hand to help you rotate open, leaning into that little shelf of the upper arm and the left knee. Or you could reach for your uh, full bind, so you'll reach for the um, right arm, rolling the right shoulder 
up and back, leaning again into that shelf you created, using the pressure to roll open. And then release your bind, come up warrior two. Take an inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, soften back. Flip the front palm, inhale, reach up and back. And then come into your low lunge. All right, so really get high onto the ball of the back foot. Come up onto your fingertips or you could use blocks. You're gonna shift weight into the left foot, pull the right knee into your chest. Shoot it through, bring the right leg down. And then settle so you're rooted into both sit bones. There'd be a little bit of space in between the legs. Bring the arms behind you so you can really lift the chest. Then you're gonna reach the left arm up. You're gonna pull the left arm forward, connecting the left shoulder to the left inner knee. And then you'll find a bind. You'll um, half circle this left hand around. You'll reach for the right arm, maybe um, for your shirt, maybe you use your blankets, for your towel. And then try to heavy the inside of your left foot so that the left knee doesn't spill out to the left. Stay really engaged in this long right leg. And then start to pull forward to any amount. You can let the head go and keep the chest pulling forward. And then start to unwind your bind. Pick up your left ankle, it will cross over the right leg. Reset the arms, lift the chest. Take an inhale, reach the right arm up. And then as you exhale, pull your belly button towards your spine, hook the right elbow around the left knee. And then rotate to look over your left shoulder. And you're gonna use again, like a bind, the pressure of the knee and the crook of the elbow, but see if you can Work to pull the left rib cage away from the left thigh. Right rib cage rotates towards the left thigh. And then come forward. You're gonna come into um, either, you could take um, ankle to knee, crossing the right ankle over, sorry, left ankle over the right knee, or you could just cross the shin bones forward. Take an inhale, lift the chest. And then start to pull the chest forward, fold forward. Again, prioritizing length in the low back. You can let the cervical spine go. You could reach the arms forward. And then walk the hands back in if they're out, lengthen the spine. And we'll just simply switch the shin that's forward or the leg that's on top for ankle to knee. Lift the chest. And then float the heart forward, pull forward. Pulling down to any amount. You reach the arms forward with the neck feet easy. And crawl yourself back up to see it. Lengthen the legs out in front of you. And come to lie down on your back. Kick the knees into the chest. Let both legs fall to the left for a twist. And if you wanted a little bit of a deeper twist, if you want to continue playing with binds, you could eagle wrap the legs. Just to bring a little more weight to weight the legs down to the left. And then use that weight kind of like an anchor, pull away from it so that you can let the right shoulder get heavier. And then bring the knees back through center. Let the knees now fall to the right. Keeping the knees stacked or eagle wrapping them. 
And then let the heaviness of the legs bring a little levity to the upper body so that you can pull, you can almost like pull away from the legs to rotate even a little bit more, letting the left shoulder heavy down. Bring the knees back into your center. Give yourself a little squeeze. You can curl the shoulder blades off of the ground, pull your knees in towards your nose. And then lengthen down. One at a time, the legs will come out long. And then you can let your arms go. And you could keep them anchored on your hips like we did at the top of class. Just find a, a version of Shavasana here where you feel anchored where you feel uh, like you can really give your weight over to the ground. And let yourself start to um, tune back into the simplicity of your breath. At this time, you'll let any controlled yoga breathing go. Just let the inhale and exhale come and go naturally. Just as you let the breath come in, come out, as you watch the breath enter and exit, if you can practice the same observational practice with your thoughts, or you're just observing them coming and going as they just bounce across your mind. Slowly start to let your breath deepen again. Bring some movement back into your fingers, into your toes. And take your time, roll over onto one side. Press yourself back up, find a tall seat. Let the eyes stay closed, let the hands just land on your lap. Just a few more moments in stillness. Take a moment to recognize and be grateful for all of the really hard things your body just did. And bring your hands together. And just a little more space, lift the spine up and out of your pelvis, a little taller. And we'll close together with a final breath in. And a breath out. Namaste.